In this tutorial, we'll continue looking at the vertex groups and the shape keys like we had done in the previous lesson. And then I'll kind of give you just a, a little sample, a hint of what you can do with it also in association with UV maps. Now notice down here I have in this same object data panel up here where we have the shape keys and everything. Down here is uh, UV maps. So let me just close the shape keys for a second. So I have three different individual UV maps on this, the whole surface and then two little patches as well. There's one patch, there's one patch, there's another patch there like that. And I use it in conjunction with the vertex groups because for instance I can come up here to this, well let me see I had vertex group 2 selected I think so let me go into edit mode. Yeah I had, that was vertex, that was my texture group 2 that I called texture 2. I just selected a random number of faces in here. I'm going to deselect those and then go up to texture 1 which is just another vertex group that's up here and I'm going to select those. I'm going to zoom out of here in the UV image editor window and you can see that what's being mapped is this region right in here right in there but now it's tiling it a little bit but we won't worry about that right now. We'll, I'll deal with that in a more extensive lesson when I get back to uh, texture maps. I wasn't really planning on covering this today, but since we were in the vertex group and it happened to be in the same location, I decided I'd check it out for you. So if we go to the node editor, you see what my setup is in here for this. I actually have quite a few things. And for some of the for some of you you'll just be off and running with this, I'm sure. So the key to look for is instead of before when we were putting things into the vector node of this image texture node, we would have the type of coordinates we wanted in. Now we have an attribute that goes in. And notice each one of these I've typed in UV map, UV map dot O one and UV map dot O O two, which corresponds to these that I made in here. I just created those maps in there and named them within there like that. So that's what needs to go in and that attribute is down here. You can find that under add input and you put add input attribute. You pipe that into there and then I'm mixing the outputs of those through a color mixer, not just a shader mixer. So node add, wait, add color mix there is what those two are and then that's what that is and then you know these are the percentages accordingly between them. And then I have two different shaders that I have in here, and then that goes through a mix shader, and that finally goes to the surface of the material. So that allows you to, that gives you quite a bit of flexibility as far as adding different materials to different portions of the same object. And we're going to cover that in detail extensively when I get back into the texture maps, maybe in about a week or so from now. I have a hard time resisting doing them because they're fun, but there's a lot of other material that I want to cover before then. But for those of you who are really into it, I'm sure you can probably just go figure it out. Because, you, you know, once these are selected, you could just go pick up that, Im, you know, the image that you want to change. You know, for instance, I go back to the UV image editor. I have that image. You know, well, what about another image? What about that image? So then I'm mapping that to there. And then, like I said, we'll cover these, uh, those scaling issues there in a future lesson. But, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, just wanted to point that out. And I'll see you in the next lesson.